Hi everybody, I'm Jaden. I'm Jason. And I'm Caden. And we're the Yahoo and Tour YouTube channel. And it's the three amigos again because everyone's out doing things and working and Nicole is busily in the kitchen doing awesome things for us because what is today? Today is preparation day. It is a final day before a Shabbat. It, it, it has been a long week. Gentlemen, you poured concrete yesterday. How did that go? Pretty well. Uh, pretty well. We got to do a little more. Did little, you look in there this morning? Yeah. Does it look all right? It looks pretty good. There's one spot where it was wet where the chickens did step around. I just have to fix it. Okay. But then I threw the uh, chicken food on the wet spot, so I have to clean that out now. Oh, that's even worse. Okay. Well, that's good. Anything else exciting happening in your Liza's world? Uh, more concrete. More concrete today. That's right. We're going to finish up this concrete, and that'll be a great task. The chickens will have dry feet for once. Um, what else you guys? Anything else going on? Uh, Shabbat's going up. That's Shabbat's that's, coming that's, up. That's exciting. That is exciting. How did the youth for y'all go last night? Uh, I was. We, I think we did good, but nobody really joined. So nobody came. There was uh, one. We had one. Person. It was we didn't he, have anyone. Shalom and Hebrew. We didn't have the grand. We didn't have. No, nah, no one was there. Nobody. No, oh, it was geez. quiet. We didn't have anybody to respond to, so it, was, it felt shorter than normal. So. That's okay though. That's okay. Sometimes people are busy. Sometimes they can't make it, and um, Yah <laughs> will send the message where the message needs to go. Well, that's why they're recorded videos, so you can watch them later. Yes, that's why. So if you're not there for live, uh, if you guys can catch it up on the on the backside, that would be great. And it is a preparation day. We've talked about preparation days before. We've talked about Shabbats before. We've talked about all of this stuff before. But let's go into this a little bit today. So we get up at the beginning of our, it's a, it's a sixth day. Today's the sixth day, right? Tomorrow's the seventh day. And we get up today and everything about today is leading to tomorrow. So we have to cut double grass for the cows. We have to make sure we we cook double dog food for the dogs. We have to make sure there's double food cooked for the kids. Um, right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, double food for the kids, not double. Not double food, just regular? Triple. Oh, triple, Nicole says. She's, she messages from a... Across the uh, kitchen here. Yeah, triple food. These these boys eat a tremendous amount. I don't know where it all goes. I don't know who eats more, the dogs or you guys. I think dogs. The dogs. Ten I think of them. the dogs, the ten of them, they, they still beat you guys? I don't think so. No? Nicole says no. <clears throat> well, that's, that's interesting. Um, that's probably sad to know. But um, oh, I'm one hungry person. <laughs> these pit bulls are like nearly 100 pounds of pop, and so there's ten of them, and so they eat a tremendous amount. You guys are a buck fifty, and uh, you eat a lot, so... Big Ben, he's he's a buck eighty. How much, Seventy. How much do you weigh, Big Ben? One hundred seventy. <laughs> Jade, Jade, we call him Big Ben because he's the big one here. Um, he's in shape, but he's just a big feller. He's outgrown me. I, I walked around six foot tall, and both of these guys, I'll only admit this one time on video. Yes. Oh, he wants me to admit it. I don't know if I can do it now. But yeah, he, he, they out, they outgrew me, and my kids outgrew me, and I they keep stepping up to me, and that that's that's not a good thing. They they usually end up <laughs> getting uh, remembering the time that they couldn't do that, but uh, yeah, they definitely outgrown their pops, and uh, there's a lot to feed. All right, guys, uh, give me some blessings. Give me a couple blessings of y'all. Uh, sight. To be able to, to be able to, the ability to see the uh, hearing, the ability to hear the word of the Torah. Yeah, absolutely. Sight and sound. Jade, give me some blessings. Uh, hands and feet be able to work. Hands and feet. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, um, I still. I'm gonna go back to my dogs I, I, and them being a blessing. I've talked about them before, but um, when you have ten pit bulls and you, have, it's basically like ten children, like ten extra children. I equate them to probably being seven and a half years old. So we literally deal with a bunch of seven and a half year olds that- You don't think they're younger? If, if you were equating it to children, no. I mean, they're, they're actually really smart. They don't mess in the house. They don't you know do sometimes. bad things in the house or anything. And um, yeah, sometimes, that, that is true sometimes. They have some accidents, but I mean, so does everybody have some accidents. <laughs> As I get old and sit and, you know, that's what happens. Old people get old and uh, you, that's the, the thing. The kids will be cleaning up the, the old people's stuff. And, uh, but the dogs are, they're, they're, they're a blessing to me and my family for sure. Um, our country is going to the way of the dark side. It seems like every country is going to the way of the dark side. So at some point... Um, these are our best friends will probably be the defenders will probably be the last step defenders of our house. And, um, that's probably the way it will go down. But yeah, I'm blessed by that. I'm also blessed by love. I think love is one of the most underrated, under talked about things ever. And when there is love inside of a family or love inside of this quorum and, you know, just, just for all you guys out there, you guys are, you guys are definitely loved. 
um, the Clarissas and the Carlas and the Grands and uh, all you guys out there, you know, Sylvia, Sylvia, Sylvia Ewerts. I always I forget you guys. I don't. It's not because I forget you guys. I'm just running this on the fly and I, I don't think right. But um, all you guys, you know, there, there's huge love and the love that we get from you guys and the love that we, we can give you guys. Um, it's real. And it's it's the it's the family of Yah. And, you know, in the world of uh darkness that we are in where it's it's you know people will flip to the ground and just start flipping around and you know people will stand around and watch them there's absolutely no love you can see that the bible was very very clear when it said the world will wax cold and it has waxed cold and you know just giving somebody a hug in today's environment you know everyone's so scared of of the the boogeyman the 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 bug you know the 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 cough and stuff like that and um they've forgotten at life in the 2019 how we can hug people and love people and show people compassion and love and you know it, it will change your mood right it will go from you could have a bad day and somebody gives you a big hug and all of a sudden something something you know the day is not so bad the sun will maybe come you know creep it out from behind the clouds and um, I think it, it is underrated. And, you know, Paul, I guess if there's anything that is related to Paul, Nicole's over there getting the dogs spun up for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, no? no? You're just playing with the dogs? I'm not playing. Canada just keeps staring at me. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, um, you know, Paul wrote it well in 1 Corinthians 13 uh, when he talks about um, the love and all about it. And, you know, if there are writings that are attributed to him, that is, that is a great, great chapter about love and, and how it will defeat all. And so our creator loves us and he loves us so much that he gave us a Torah, he gave us a way and he gave us a, a hope, he gave us a son. And his son is the, the hope for all of us because without the son, we would not have a Levitical priesthood, we would not be able to atone for our sins, we would have nothing right now. We would be living in a complete darkness because we don't have the people that, that would help us atone for these sins. And so now that we have Messiah Yahushua, um, or you know, as lots of people call him, Jesus the Christ, um, you know, it, we wouldn't have anything and that love by him, you know, he, he loves us so much that he literally gave his life for us and, uh, not only gave his life for us, but he gave his life as an example. He walked the Torah perfectly. He, he was compassionate. He was kind. He was gentle. He was meek. He was everything that I guess we as human beings strive to be and we're not right. And that is, that is an amazing example that we have. And so our creator loves us that much that he literally gave his only begotten son. That is, and um, you know, I think it's something that we should all understand and something we should definitely appreciate every single day. You know, we should be thanking Yah for his son, Yahushua, and um, bringing that light to us. So with that, gentlemen, do you guys have anything? No, uh, no. All right, ready to begin. let's get on our handy dandy split screen. And you, you guys- two little bars right there, the split screen for you, that's just my phone. I don't know what you're talking about, but maybe. There's little bars right here. See these little bars? Yeah, what about it? I don't think that's it, is it? Is that a split screen? Yeah, usually split screen for me on my phone. Too. I don't know. I am I'm, I'm just an old Googler. What do I know? All right, numbers four is where we are at. And so let us begin. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe and unto El Aron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi after their families, by the house of their fathers. From 30 years old and upward, even until 50 years old, all that enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. Okay, so from 30 years old and upward, they can work in the temple, right? So that's 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 an older age, right? Why, why don't you think that guys your age would be able to work in the temple? Uh, maybe inexperienced, uh, not responsible enough. Um, do you guys feel like you're not responsible enough? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I want to. I don't think I want to have more experience. I'm older. Um, Just like more a say, you mess up, you're dead, right? And if they make like a mistake, like their their brains aren't fully developed in like uh, until like what is it, like 22 or something like that. I have no idea. Where'd it's, you get that fact from? Like, I, you guys or something? Uh, we might say that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure we read like, something somewhere. They're not fully like matured until like like way later in life. So at 30, they probably already have experience. They're not gonna like mess around and make some mistake where they throw the wrong fire on and get consumed by it. Yeah, it is. It's interesting because um, you know, as youth, the things that concern you guys the most definitely don't concern the the adults and the things that, that kids worry about or, or youngsters. Um, it's it's a lot different, and as you age and as you guys mature, you when you guys make it to thirty, you you guys have seen how fast time flies for us, right? It, it's like I still remember bouncing you guys on my knee and going to the park and going all the stuff. It's just kids, and now here you are as your full grown adults sitting next to me, outgrown me even, 
And um, yeah, so anyway, 30, 30 it is. So 30 until 50. And now after a 50, why don't you think they'd be in the tabernacle? Maybe a little too old. Can maybe let's See, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you're like, your mind's like gone at 50, but maybe it's like, it's just time to retire. It's just time to put it down. I, I got guess. six years until it's time I couldn't work in the temple. In the temple, So five years? Oh, I keep losing track. That's that losing track of time stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so 50 years old. I guess you're, you're too senile or something at 50. <laughs> That's not true because I know there's a lot Wait, of... Wait, what about Aaron, though? Because Aaron's here. Aaron's like 80, 90. Like a real old here, like really old. Yeah, well, so this is... They're basically setting it up. So I'm like, ah... Why, why didn't he light the candles? Ah, oh, I'm, I'm just too old. I didn't, I forgot or something of the sort. And there is a, I will definitely say as you get older, your mind is not what it is. So I, like I tell you guys all the time, cherish your youth, cherish this time right here because the old, uh, the old synapses don't work like they used to. Maybe it was just 30 years of service was enough once Th from their 30 to 50. 30 to 50, 20, 20 years. 20 years. Maybe they're done. Maybe. Yeah, the new generations. Yeah, bring in the new guys. All right, so four. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the assembly about the most holy things. And when the camp sets forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of the testimony with it. Okay, so the veil comes down. So this is when they're moving. This is when they're like right. leaving the area they're living at. So. Right, right. And so when they when they take it down, you know, that the veil that separates them is the veil that actually covers the ark. I found that interesting. And she'll put there on the covering of antelope skins. I know we're going to have an issue here. Antelope skins and shall spread over it a cloth wholly of blue and shall be, and shall put in the staves thereof. All right, what is Mine just says a covering of fine leather. And the, and 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 the king says badger skin, which oh, that's no. an unclean animal, right? Not again. I don't think the badgers are right at all. It says durable leather, so I'm pretty sure it's like, what? This one right here says durable leather. They said gerbil leather. I'm like, that is not right either. Now we have gerbils, we have badgers not, and gerbils now. Yeah, that's no, not correct man. at all. Durable. Okay, so I, I think maybe antelope skin or maybe ram skin. I don't know. I don't know how we every translation has, has messed this up. So. Yes, and maybe they're all similar words because like in Spanish, there's very similar words. And if you don't like translate right, you could always like get a different translation. Dude, a badger's a filthy little animal. I don't think they're going to put badgers. I don't know, though. I don't think it's real soft either. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. All right, seven. Badgers are soft. Did you go kill badgers too? My well, my wife has killed a bear. She's killed the bears and and she like, she's done crazy stuff. So um, she's a little redneck hillbilly girl. All right, seven. And upon the table of showbread, they shall spread a cloth of blue and put there on the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers to cover withal, and the continual bread shall be thereon. And they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet. And cover the same with a covering of antelope skins, and shall put in the staves thereof. So I would almost say it's probably more antelope skin is probably the right translation. Yeah. I would imagine. However, you make leather, which would be something like well, that. Well, that's I anything think. makes leather, right? So you make leather out of cows, you know, out of anything that has a skin. I think is what you call leather. Out of a badger. Yeah, uh, maybe out of a badger. I don't think they y'all would put unclean animals upon the altar though, or on the. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe and. They shall take a cloth of blue and cover the menorah of the light and his lamps and his tongs and his snuff dishes and all the oil vessels thereof with wherewith they minister unto it. All right, anything change on your guys? Might as well they serve it, not minister unto it. So. Right, that's the same, ministering, serve unto it, yep. Um, ten. And they shall put it and all the vessels thereof within a covering of antelope skin and shall put it upon a bar. What did you guys say? Oh, it says a frame. Fine okay. leather and put on a bar. Yeah, frame. Okay. And upon the golden altar, they shall spread a cloth of blue and cover it with a covering of antelope skins and shall put to the staves thereof. They shall insert its poles. Poles. Right. Poles. So is this only, is this just when they're moving? This is all just like what they do when they're moving? I think they're when they're taking this down, I think is what we're dealing with here. Yeah, it's like, so like, because when you're moving, especially since they're moving, they don't have anything called U-Haul. They're probably taking that by hand, so they're going to be... Uh, it's called Y-Haul. Yeah. Yishrael they're taking Hall. it by hand. They're going to be going through a whole bunch of nastiness. They're going through deserts, muds, and a whole bunch of crazy things. So they're probably going to cover it up so it doesn't get destroyed. We have, Nicole. And the one from yesterday said what each one of their duties was. Right. So each one of those people have a duty to take down the curtains, to take down. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right, so we are on your... Jade, you are... Uh, I'm behind you. You're a little behind, bro. It's, it's not like little Eli. We're on 13. Okay. Yeah. I think we're on 13. And they shall take away the ashes from the altar and spread a purple cloth thereon. 
everything purple and blue, and they shall put upon it all the vessels thereof, wherewith they minister about it, even the censers, the flesh hooks, and the shovels, and the basins, all the vessels of the altar. And they shall spread upon it a covering of antelope skins, and put to the staves of it. And, and flesh hooks and forks. Yeah, flesh hooks. Yeah, how it says forks, flesh hooks. It just sounds so like. It's Anyone so, have a flesh hook that I can? I mean, so sad. Technically, yeah. I mean, I, I mean it is a flesh sense. hook. Yeah, you, it's kind of a hook. It's We're not like what we really think of. Dabbing, yeah. I so know. maybe it had a hook at the end of it. I see more of a flesh hook. I think for fishing, yeah. Yeah, if we went into a, a restaurant, do you guys have any uh, flesh hooks? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and when Aaron and his sons had made have made an end of covering the sanctuary and all the vessels of the sanctuary as the camp is to set forward. After that, the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it, but they shall not touch any holy thing lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the assembly. Wait, so they had to move it, but they can't touch it. But they put it around, they put animal skins around it, right? Oh, okay. So they like basically covered it up and they, they put all this stuff on there. So I wonder if they were the ones that actually moved, they, so they just tossed the animal skin over it and then picked it up after that. I don't know how they did it. I don't know. Sure you gotta be very hard. careful. For your yeah, dad. don't mess this one up. Okay. Into the office of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest pertains the oil for the light and the sweet incense and daily oblation and the anointing oil and the oversight of all the tabernacle and of all the, that therein is in the sanctuary and in the vessels thereof. Okay. So that's Eleazar. That's the son. Yep. He's the uh, he's the oil bearer or something. I mean, he's the one that got all the lights and stuff going, and the anointing oils and things like that. And that's another one you wouldn't mess up. So too. he still do sacrifices even though he's doing this stuff, but there's like extracurricular. Well, I'm sure they all knew how to do this stuff. Like everyone would probably know have a role and know how to do this if they were. I would I would have you guys cross trained in all of this, so that if somebody was out or somebody's sick or something, we'd never ever had to skip a, a session. I don't know though. And Yahoo has spoken to El Moshe and unto El Ron, saying, Cut ye not off the tribe of the families of Kohethium from among the Livium, but thus do unto them that they may live and not die. When they approach unto the most holy things, Aaron and his son shall go in and appoint them every one to his service and to his burden. But they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered, lest they die. All right, what did Kohath do with that? Right. And he's like cursed. His generations are like... Well, they can't like do the rest of the regular things. Uh, I don't know. They did something, but they're like, don't kill them. Let them still live. It's with like you it's guys. almost like a they're put under like a like almost like a probation or something. Well, he's just saying how these guys are the ones assigned to this, and he's just talking about how you would do this. I do we know they fell under a curse or something? I don't know. It says don't cut them off. Yeah, cut ye not off the tribe of the families of Kohathim from among the Levium. Like they obviously did something to be saying that. Yeah, like maybe. they obviously you saying, don't, say, don't cut like, them off like, for no reason. All right, they can't be like doing the stuff, but they can uh, move stuff for you. Yeah, it's interesting though. They're they're they didn't get booted out of the Levites, or at least booted out of the temple stuff. They're still able to do the temple stuff, which is still a huge honor, I would say. Okay, but they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered, lest they die. And Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe saying, "Take also the sum of the sons of Gershon throughout the houses of their fathers by their families." From 30 years old and upward until 50 years old shall you number them, all that enter in to perform the service to do the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. This is the service of the families of the Gershinim to serve and for burdens. And they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle and the tabernacle of the assembly, his covering and the covering of the antelope skins that is above upon it and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And again, the king says badgers. I don't think so. We're not using badgers. Maybe. I don't know. Though. Would Yah you really use an unclean animal? That's like, you got to get a lot of badgers, right? They're not that big, right? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, the antelopes aren't very big either. I mean, antelope is like a, it's a smaller version of a deer. It's, it's, yeah, but it's bigger than a little badger. It is bigger than a badger. Less kids. Yep. All right. And the hangings of the court and the hanging for the door of the gate of the court, which is by the tabernacle and by the altar round about, and their cords and all the instruments of their service, and all that is made for them, so shall they serve. At the appointment of Aaron and his sons shall be all the service of the sons of Gerashinim, in all their burdens and in all their service, and ye shall appoint unto them in charge all their burdens. This is the service of the families of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the assembly, and their charge shall be under the hand of Ethimar, the son of Aaron, the priest." So it's all of Aaron's kids. Aaron and his kids are like the commanders of the Levites. 
And Moshe is still ahead of that. As for the sons of Mer Merari, how do I do this right? Hold on. Merari, Merari. As for the sons of Merari, you shall number them after their families by the house of their fathers. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, shall you number them. Everyone that enters into the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the assembly. How you like? Hey. How you doing, buddy? Good. Did you get the cows over? Yep. All right. And this is the charge of their burden. According to all their service in the tabernacle of the assembly, the boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof and the pillars thereof and the sockets thereof. And the pillars of the court round about and their sockets and their pins and their cords with all their instruments and with all their service and by name ye shall reckon the instruments of the charge of their burden. All right, does anyone understand what this is saying at all? So they were assigned, uh, says it by name, the equipment of the duty of their burden. So whatever they were supposed to do, they got their own tools for and they were assigned to Socket that. Socket sets. Too. Yeah, they got their own tools. Okay. All right, 33. This is the service of the families of the sons of Merari, according to all their service, in the tabernacle of the assembly, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. And Moshe and Aaron and the chief of the assembly numbered the sons of Kohathim after their families and after the house of their fathers. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, everyone that enters into the service for the work of the tabernacle of the assembly. And those that were numbered of them... By their families were 2,750. Eli, will you check with Josh over there? He's about to bark. All right, 37. Sorry, guys. These were they that were numbered of the families of the Kohathium. All that might do service into the tabernacle of the assembly, which Moshe and Aaron did number according to the commandment of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. And those that were numbered of the house, the sons of Gershon throughout their families and by the house of their fathers, from 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, everyone that enters into the assembly for the work of the tabernacle of the assembly. Did I read that right? I think I said assembly twice. Let me reread that. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, everyone that enters into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. Even those that were numbered of them throughout their families by the house of their fathers were 2,630. So 2,630 people just for this task. These are they that were numbered of the families of the sons of Gershon, of all that might do service in the tabernacle of the assembly, whom Moshe and Aaron did number according to the commandment of Yahuwah. Okay, so there's a lot of people right here. Can you, here's the gig is if Yah did not have these people have something to do, they'd be sitting around doing nothing. So more than likely, every single one of these guys have stuff to do every single day or else it'd be like kids. If you don't have something to do, they get bored and they, they cause chaos. Or dogs, either one. And those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari throughout their families by the house of their fathers from 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, everyone that entered into the assembly for the work of the tabernacle of the assembly. Even those that were numbered of them after their families were 3,200. So... 3,000 people working. 5,000 between the two of those, just on those those little things. So there's a lot of people that work at the temple. got to be a ton of stuff to do. Just a tremendous amount. These be those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, whom Moshe and Aaron numbered according to the word of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. All those that were numbered of the Levium, whom Moshe and Aaron and the chief of Yashrael numbered after their families and after the house of their fathers. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, Everyone that came to do the service of the ministry and the service of the burden of the tabernacle of the assembly. Even those that were numbered of them were 8,504 score. Now, who are these? Who are we numbering here? This is everyone. This is, I think it's combined. Yeah, everyone that came to do work. Okay. Even those that were numbered of them were 8,504 score. According to the commandment of Yahuwah, they were numbered by the hand of Moshe, everyone according to his service and according to his burden. Thus were they numbered of him as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Now, that's that's a lot of people. Uh, yeah, 8,500. I was thinking, is but, the little uh, temple thing they built, is it big enough for all of them to be in there? No, I definitely, I, no. there's definitely shifts, right? There's definitely like people are unclean, someone else so, steps in, or uh, I think they had like their... Weekly jobs, monthly jobs, they swapped off consistently. I think this is 24 hours as well, right? right. I think this is a 24-hour operation. And I think they're training these people that when they actually inherit the land, after they go to war and do all this stuff, because they spread them out throughout all the tribes, mm -hmm. right? And so this is basically everybody's getting a, um, 
a lesson in understanding exactly how to do all this stuff regardless because once they are split up they would all still need to do this so there's a lot of people there. there's 8500 people there eight, almost 8600 okay well that wraps that chapter up for us eli how you doing buddy good how's everything good good cow's all good yep no mr. problems mr ed was missing so i had to go find him mr ed was missing you found him yep all right that's good yeah mr ed he, he run, wanders away but um that's about it uh it is a preparation day we spoke about that eli we spoke about going into the shabbat um give me a couple of blessings from y'all anything eli a couple of blessings from y'all that you anything wood helps us start fires wood absolutely <laughs> Helps yeah, us fires helps us eat. Helps feed the dogs. <laughs> if we didn't have trees, we'd go starving to death, right? Or you'd be eating uh, cold lentils. You'd be eating uh, like bagged lentils that were just crunchy. We'd, everything crunchy. we had no teeth left because we couldn't we couldn't uh, boil any water. Yeah. So wood. Anything else you got? Uh, fire. Fire is a beautiful thing. Yeah, fire is a wonderful thing, and um, our Creator has made all of this stuff. And you know, it's I, I oftentimes will sit around and I think about our Creator, and I'm like, how long did it take to do this? And it'll I'll be eating a fruit or I'll be eating something, and I'm like, I'll look at this, and I'm like, actually, it was it was broccoli the other day, not just a broccoli, but the stalks. I, I give these guys what I call vitamin packs. Which are the bottoms of the stalks of um, broccoli, which are uh, it, the outside of it is like uh, it's almost stringy and it's really hard, and then you have to bite through it. It has almost kind of a bitter taste to it, but it's it's out where we're at. I mean, you don't we don't have things like we can't get vitamins, you can't get anything stuff like this, and so um, we have to literally live off the land and what we get. So, but as I was looking at that and I was looking at the design, how long do you think it took Yah to make a, a, a broccoli? I have no Just idea. Just that design. And coming up with it and, and, you know, everything that we have is built into what we know as of DNA, right? It's the structure of everything. And if you were able to put together all the elements of what you need, you could, you could create something like that. But everything that is out there is absolutely perfect from the, from the trees and the plants and the animals and, and the way we can walk on two legs and stand and jump around on one foot. Uh, Jade, wake up here. Um, I think it's, it's important that, um, we understand and we glorify our creator in all things, right? It, it doesn't that he just sanctified us and set us apart and gave us a Torah and gave us a son. You know, here's the bottom line. This is what, this is what you guys need to understand. Everybody out there, including the boys, our creator owes us nothing. We owe him absolutely everything from life, from everything. If you're breathing, if you're listening to this message out there, our creator needs to be praised. He brought you to life. He knows who you are. I mean, when you talk about the essence of a soul and you talk about the essence of a body and how did he breathe life into us and, you know, um, it's just an amazing, amazing place that we are at. And if we wanted to design something like this, there's no way we could. There's no way we could even come up with a, a design doc, let alone attempt to build something and the only people that are doing any of the stuff are, are they're, they're recreating stuff right they have the CRISPR machines where they take Yaz DNA and they mix stuff up and they come out with monsters and things and you know it's nothing is created we as humans create absolutely nothing we could build a we could build a building but did we create it no we didn't bring the iron we, none of this the earth brings the iron the, all the metals everything we had all we did was assemble the greatness that Yah has developed and put for us. And so we, we must absolutely understand his magnitude and his love, his power, and, you know, all praise to Yah, all glory to Yah and everything. All right. Anything, one have anything else? Uh, no. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Today's right. preparation day, so prepare for your Shabbat. Yeah, preparation day. It's Shabbat tomorrow, day of rest. Right. Let's make it happen. All right, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shalom. shalom. We're out.